What's going on, everyone? Casey Adams here. Welcome back to the Rise of the Young podcast. On today's episode, I am honored to have the one and only May Musk here with us. Thanks so much for coming to the show, May. Thank you, Casey. Absolutely. So, so first off, I just want to say your story is so inspiring. And your book, A Woman Makes a Plan, Advice for a Lifetime of Adventure, Beauty, and Success, it's something that not only I've bought for my mom because I want her to read the book, but I want to ask you, what inspired you to write this book? Well, especially as you are talking to the young people, um, it's when I do modeling jobs with very young models, and then afterwards they say, oh, I love what you told me, please write a book. And then, uh, then I'll go to events and then people say, oh, I love what you said, please write a book. And I'm thinking, what did I say, you know? So then... Um, I started from childhood, you know, it had very adventurous parents, very adventurous uh, childhood, came into the Kalahari Desert, and people think that's extraordinary, and, and it is. <laughs> yep, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, and then through to uh, my studies, my marriage, which was not good, and then to the um, moving to new countries, I started my own business in eight cities in three countries, rewriting the exams as a dietitian starting my modeling career as well. And to show you that it's not easy, you can make a plan, but you have to change it as it goes along. Because definitely don't plan to live in eight cities and start your own business because it's hard. So just so you know, that's where a a woman makes a plan. But many men who have read the book, it's also helped them with their business. They like the adventure part, the family part, and the health part. Yes. Love it. So I... um... I'm one of three children. I know that you have three children as well. And I want to ask you, where does your, your personal drive for entrepreneurship come from? Because your story, it, you have such a work ethic that has been passed on to, you know, Elon Kimball and Tosca that I think shows to the world. So where does your work ethic come from and how did you develop that at an early age? Well, my parents always worked from home and next door to our home. And I worked for them from when I was eight years old. So um, pretty much, you know, you help people. And, and, uh, and so when I graduated, of course, I didn't really want to work for someone. But then I got married and had three kids in three years. That's not the best time to go looking for a job. So I just started a practice at home because uh, people asked me nutrition advice. And I did that. And then once a Tosca was uh, born, then after that, they wanted me back in the modeling business because I started at 15. And then took the break to have three kids and then went back into modeling. And then I found out, oh, you know, you can survive as a dietitian and a model. And I was in an unhappy situation, which I didn't want to bring into my book. And I asked the publisher to take it out. And it seems there's many women in, in bad marriages, um, abusive marriages, who do find it hard to leave. And it's scary. And you are scared. And when you leave, you are financially strapped. But to, to live in fear every day is just not worth it. So that's why they wanted to be in there. And funny enough, many women have related to that. And then when men have more related to my business, uh, all the business ideas I give. And then, um, yeah, it's just, you go through stages in your life. And, you know, I'm going to be 72 <laughs> this Love week. It. And, yeah, so um, I'm hoping this will help for people of all ages. Absolutely. So I know, I know you talk about in your book, you talk about ageism, right? And you are number one, I want to say, absolutely beautiful. And being 71 years old, how have you been able to overcome these challenges? And what advice do you give to people that may be dealing with whether that's ageism or just a challenge in their life that is holding them down, especially during a time like this during coronavirus? Well, during coronavirus, we all pretty much uh, are staying at home. And really, it's if you have underlying conditions like heart disease, diabetes, or lung disease, then you are at higher risk. I'm fortunately healthy because I eat very well. As a dietitian, I eat very well, although I do sometimes give myself treats, which I usually <laughs> don't do that so much, but I am now. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> uh, but you can have treats every now and again. It's not like um, you're, I'm that rigid. And the thing is, um, to, you need to keep yourself in good health, and then you need to be active. So I do stretches on the ground, uh, yoga stretches, and, um, and then I sometimes I'll watch some kind of pop star dancing, and I'll try to copy that dancing just to get my energy going, you know? Because <laughs> you really, you, 
to force yourself. You could much rather lie on the couch and feel nope. sorry about yourself. But instead, um, do podcasts. How's that? Oh, love it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Very cool. So I, I want to ask you just myself, I'm 19 years old and there's a lot of young, not only entrepreneurs, but people who listen to this that are starting businesses. What advice do you give to individuals who want to start their first business? First of all, I always think it needs to be good. It needs to be good for others. So I started my business. I was a dietitian and I gave nutrition counseling to patients of doctors to make, keep them in better health. So it makes you feel good. It makes them feel good. And then Tosca, my daughter, she does passion flicks, which is romance yep. movies where the women are strong. They're not diseased. They're not brutalized. You know, they are, they are from best-selling romance books. So yep. they are happy. They're, in the end, they're happy. Of course, there's always drama, but it's <laughs> not a, a, the woman is strong and, and good. And then Kimball, he does good work too. He does his farm-to-table restaurants, which are unfortunately now and then the vegetable gardens in schools again those are closed as well wow. uh, yeah he really has to work through that yeah and then um elon has a uh, tesla you know saving the world you know yeah. let us fresh air and it's such fresh air now i i actually tweeted out something about how different like in india and in asia how the pollution makes everything brownish and grayish and then now the air is clear wow. you know which is Absolutely. great. And then, of course, um, then SpaceX, which is um, uh, feeding the astronauts. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so it's all good thing. As long as you're doing something good, then you need to walk, work towards it. Let people know, fortunately, there's social media. There's something like your channel. There's a uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I still have to figure out, <laughs> have my YouTube channel and have my yeah. own TikTok and all that. Which oh, wow. <laughs> I, I mean, love it. I have to, I've got time now to figure yes. out all the things. And uh, so the, the, that's the whole thing about um, finding what you want to do that will help people. And then you have a better chance of, of being successful. Like your mess, you give good messages to people. You have good guests and they share their experiences. And so then people will want to tune into you. And so, you know, yeah. You, you have to find what, what you would like to do that will be good, good to other people and like artists. So, I mean, I have no art in me. I don't know about you. But <laughs> okay. You, if you're good at drawing, draw. If you're good at photographs, take good photographs and post them and let people know and then start your business that way. So everyone has their own um, uh, passion that they would like to do and let's um, just work at it all the time. I work day and night, yeah. even now. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would love for you to take us back, you know, growing up in South Africa and moving all over to different countries. Where were you at 18, 19 years old? And what was your plan then? Okay. 18, 19 years old. I started university at, at 17 and I was getting, I wanted to do sciences. So then my father said, well, yeah, I want to do bio, yeah, biochemistry or microbiology. And he said to me that, you won't have a profession at the end, do something with a profession at the end. So then the only one I could think of was, was dietetics. However, I had to go to an Afrikaans university. So I had to learn to speak Afrikaans as well as do physics, math, you know, biochemistry, microbiology. Yeah. And uh, it was hard. So that was a huge challenge. I don't yeah. recommend that. Don't just don't go and study in another language. Yeah. But I did. And I did get my degree. And then um, when I was uh, uh, divorced and going through a hard time too, uh, I decided to do then my hospital dietetics diploma and move to a small university town because I was really going through a hard yeah. time. And that's in my book too. Sad. I was just so sad. And then um, we stayed in the doctor's quarters. So my children were in the bedroom and I was in the living room kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> And that was to say, they never complained and um, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was all I could afford, you know, while yeah. I studied. And then, um, yeah, so then I moved quite a bit. It's, I always have to plan everything so that I don't move unnecessary things because it costs you money. Yep. And you don't know where you're going to and all that. When I moved from Johannesburg to, um, to Toronto, then I was 41. And they blocked my funds. So you can imagine starting from scratch there with 
three kids and a rent-controlled apartment, which we had to clean up. So as I say, 17, 18, 19, I was struggling through university, studying um, medical with medical um, subjects in, in Afrikaans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew what my plan was then. My plan was just to survive. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I, um, I want to ask you just because I, I, me and my mom are super close and uh, I have two older brothers myself and she always talks to me about how, you know, you, you raise kids in a, you know, in, in one unique way, but they all tend to do different things. What's your advice to parents and what would you say was some of your parenting tips that you'd give to people that are maybe young parents that are raising children? Well, you know, they, you need to teach them independence so that they can actually be responsible for themselves. Like, for example, even if they're young, very young, they can, they can still clear their table from the, you know, clear, clear their plate from the table, be polite. Uh, consider other people that is not all about themselves now I would say um, let them walk to school or take the bus but nowadays you know with all the news and that you you're concerned about their safety yeah. and uh, that was not something we were, I was concerned about I just got found the closest to public school because of yep. course I can afford a private school and uh, and I went to public schools and then the kids had to get there on their own you know but yeah. I not as safe as that as it is nowadays it's a little unsafe or yeah. or the news makes it seem so maybe it was unsafe in our days and we just didn't know it okay got it how um on a daily basis especially during a time like this how has your daily routine maybe changed due to everything happening with coronavirus and the lockdown or just what do you what does your day-to-day -day look like because i know like you say in multiple interviews you have a crazy schedule so i'd love for you to walk us through some of the daily routines and rituals of may musk okay but first of all before this shutdown i had a flight booked every week to fly <laughs> somewhere it's either for a speaking engagement or charity or a modeling job all right so all that's canceled wow and then um uh, so now I'm going through, and I'm sure everybody has the same, boxes of photographs. And I usually, I have everything on Dropbox, all the important things. But now I'm, like, I found a hundred photographs from a um, modeling job from the 80s. Then <laughs> scanning them, labeling them, putting them in folders. And, the, and then, then I did the 90s now still have the 2000s the 2010s can you imagine i have a very busy two weeks ahead yeah and so that's what i'm doing then i'm walking my dog that's when i cover up you know with the mask and gloves and yeah you know walk him three times a day other than that i'm in my apartment okay very cool and i'm watching tv oh i've been watching some some great series okay i speak and watch in french german and dutch because those are the three languages i speak and uh, but you don't get in, you again don't get the chance to speak in America. Yeah. So uh, and I'm you know with my book going worldwide, I'm going to be uh, going to uh, different countries, and I'd like to be able to be interviewed in different languages. Very cool. That's that's yeah. very cool. Yeah. With your book having just so much success, and like you just said, becoming a worldwide sensation, just. How does that make you feel? Because I know your story is so not only important to you, but it's such a wild journey. So with, with everything happening with your book now getting so much worldwide exposure, what does it mean that to you that how your book is impacting so many lives around the world? Well, I, I get very excited because when, you know, because I'm a social media, people post my book and then they, they go through different chapters and they say, this, this resonated with me or this sounded like my life. Oh, you're giving me hope and you're inspiring me. And uh, that makes, makes me feel good, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm, I'm happy that other countries also find the book inspirational uh, and that uh, people can improve their lives and make a change if you're in an unhappy situation. Love that. I, I have a question just... Throughout your journey, you know, with the success of all three of your children, how did your life change as your children got older? And how has the relationship changed as they got more busy and just more productive? Uh, building? Well, you see, I've always been very busy and they've always been very busy. So that doesn't change. Very cool. <laughs> um, but we do get together often, you know, when we can. And uh, fortunately, just before this lockdown, we got together. Um, 
And uh, so now we're just, uh, you know, waiting. We can um, text, video, or I see them on Instagram or whatever, and Twitter, and uh, we can FaceTime, but um, we're all still very busy. <laughs> and, uh, it's not like I'm clingy that I need to hear from my children every day. Oh, none of that. <laughs> you know, I, I have a very busy life and I Love like it. Love that. Where do you see the, the future of just modeling and fashion going during a time with social media? You're, you're very in tune with social media. You've built an amazing brand and you're, you're talking about things like TikTok and you're doing podcasts. Like you're very in culture and I love it. Like, where does that come from and how have you been able to stay so current and just on top of, um, you know, what's working in terms of marketing and everything happening on social media? It's, it's hard. You have to learn every new platform. <laughs> you have to learn. And, you know, and it's, and I'm not like a teenager who goes, oh, I'm just going to get into this and do it. I read every instruction. I'm not willing to try something. <laughs> case it goes wrong and so, yeah. so you, uh, you know luckily my assistant is uh, Anna who is very um, up to date and she's willing to try anything so so that helps a lot and uh, and uh, um, otherwise I am um, every time there's an update or an upgrade or something you got to learn stuff so much more and and it's and it's hard you know? yeah you have to do it or you stay behind. And then when it comes to fashion, um, I do have a team, I used to have a team, who keep me fashionable, like with my hair and my makeup and my clothing and, and keeping me look very trendy for a woman in her 70s. And uh, uh, I, I would like to say I always look comfortable. No, I'm not always comfortable. They can put me in skin tight stuff sometimes and, uh, and big head pieces and all that kind of thing. And, uh, but uh, I don't complain because I'm privileged. I just feel so happy about that on the modeling yeah. side. I love that. When it comes to just your legacy, what would you say you want your legacy to be here on this earth? I, I haven't thought about having a legacy. Um, I think, um, hmm, I don't think I need to have a legacy. I just okay. think uh, maybe just aim for a happier life. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Throughout the, what's been the, some of the most rewarding moments of your life when it comes to whether that's being on magazine covers and what those mean to you, but can you give us an example of something that comes to mind when you think of a, a rewarding moment that just shows to yourself what's possible with everything you're doing? I would say being a cover girl at 69. Yes. I mean, who would think? I've, I've done <laughs> beauty campaigns, but nobody, you know, I was like the third person in the beauty camp saying the kind of thing. Uh, and uh, you, every model wants a, what they call a makeup campaign. I mean, that's, that's the highlight of your, of your career. And uh, I got it at 69. Wow. So there you go. You I just love that. keep going in your field and you never know. And it's done so well and it uh, makes me feel very special. And uh, yeah, that's I love great. That. Uh, I and it's, it's so, I found it so fascinating because you know, at 69 years old, you are thriving. And I, I want to ask you, what advice do you give to maybe someone out there that has the feels like, you know, it's, hey, it's time to put, uh, put my shoes away. It's, I got to get this normal job and society and the world is coming on to me in a way that I didn't think was going to happen. Like, what advice do you give to someone out there that feels stuck, that doesn't have that plan right now? What would you tell them? First of all, why do you feel stuck? And who's making you feel stuck? And if they're making you feel like you're not worth much, goodbye. They must go. They must just go. You can't, you can't mix with people who make you feel less than you feel about yourself. And you need to explore more options. And I mean, if you really would love to just lie back and watch TV, yeah. do that. But if you really feel like you're not being treated right or that people aren't promoting you, like I always say at, at 50, women are let go from a company and men become CEOs. So that's got to stop. Mm -hmm. So women have to start supporting women in that and men have to start supporting women. And women should get a position if she's better qualified than the man. And nowadays, there's still a man's club. Now, hopefully, your generation will change that even yeah. more. Yes. I love that. 
what would you say keeps you motivated on a daily basis? Because I, I see you, you know, you're doing all these podcasts on a daily basis and you're doing these book tours. Like what keeps you motivated? Um, I don't know. I wake up positive. I'm very excited about the day. I mean, I must say with the lockdown, I became very sad because of all the people losing their jobs. And yeah. I don't know where they're going to get food and how they're going to support themselves. But you can only do so much sadness and then you have to then start posting about, you know, uh, doing good things in the world and, yeah. and give it, get out a positive message. We'll, we'll get over this and then we'll just take off. You know, yeah. we really will. Yeah. I love that. How do you define success in your life? I don't know. I'll wait until I see it. <laughs> okay. Very cool. <laughs> I'm only joking. I mean, I'm feeling uh, uh, really top of the world now. I'm yeah. Uh, in the world as a speaker, especially because of my age. And they're loving it that a woman, you know, 70s is working so hard and successful and confident and stylish. And so that I've been speaking in different countries in uh, China, Hungary, and uh, Lebanon. I mean, wonderful it's been yeah. wonderful that and uh, i think that's that could be my goal then is to go to all these countries where especially the ones that have my are going to publish my book i will just be giving talks on feeling good at any age yeah yes. when it comes to public speaking um, i do a lot of public speaking myself and i think a lot of people listening they want to maybe try that along their journey because there's a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this show what would you say inspires you to speak on stage and how do you define your speaking presence well what happens is that um, from when i was a teenager i would be asked to go on radio or to give talks and then uh, in my 20s with my degree i was asked to give talks and and um i just did it i, I didn't <laughs> give much thought and then in in my 30s i started getting paid for my talks which was great because first yep. of all when people say you have to give a talk i said i can't leave my practice i can't stop modeling uh, you have to pay me for what i'm losing in my income for that day and then they started paying me which was great yeah. and uh, the thing is um so i'm very comfortable giving talks because if you have a message to share and that could help other people then it's nice to give talks yeah and uh, so the platform has increased and it's um, really worldwide now. I love that. Do you have a morning ritual? Yes, I have to have one because my dog uh, okay. controls my life. So what happens is that uh, uh, he wakes me up. He's usually my alarm clock um, around 7 a.m. But sometimes 6.30, you okay. know, sometimes I'm even up before him. And then he looks at me as if to say, um, I'm not ready to get up yet. And then I make coffee and give him his treat. He knows when that coffee uh, come, uh, door goes open, he's going to get a treat. And then we go for our walk. Very and that's cool. My I love that. Did you have any mentors along your journey that helped you, you know, stay on track through your journey? And if so, who were they? I didn't because in the nutrition field, it was unusual for dietitians to run their own business. So I ended up giving talks on how to run your own business as a wellness yeah. professional. So I didn't really have anybody else who was doing that. Then as a model, I just wait to be booked and yeah. they kept on booking me, you know, yeah. who knew? Um, so I didn't have any mentors there either. Okay, um, very, very cool. As a model, what advice do you give to maybe young, you know, models out there who are building a career that haven't got their first gig or they're looking to get booked? What advice do you give them? I, you just got to keep on going to those auditions. You just keep on going. You keep on going. And if you get one out of 20 jobs, well done. Yeah. You know? It's a numbers uh, game. There's <laughs> a lot of rejection in modeling and you're just not right for the job and there's, you can't explain it. And uh, what do you mean I could have done that? That doesn't help to even go back on that. Yeah, very yeah. cool. And I, I find it very unique. And I think as you as a very powerful woman, just what advice would you give yourself if you were to talk to the 18 year old May Musk with everything you know now? Oh, at 18. Yeah, then I was, uh, you think you know everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you also think the world is quite great because my parents were fabulous and I was living with them while I was studying. So I knew everything. I was happy with my life. I was happy in my home. And then, of course, reality 
you know, comes into your life and you find that some people are not nice. And I hope that from this, you will know that your uh, viewers will say, if I'm in a bad situation, just get out of it quicker than I did because I suffered. All right. Yeah. So you don't, I hope you suffer less. Yeah. Wow. You think you can change people, but when they're evil, they're pretty evil. Okay, very cool. I have yeah. two more quick questions. Um, just one being, like I said earlier, you're absolutely beautiful. What is the key or what do you give, what advice do you give people for, from a dietary perspective, if they're looking to live a long, healthy life? Well, I follow the flexitarian diet. That's vegetarian at home and then some meat, fish, and chicken when I go out. There is also the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, and the Weight Watchers diet. Those are the four main diets to keep you in good health. And it's also good for your skin. It's good for your hair. It's good for your nails if you are eating well. And that's, that is the way to, to go. Very cool. So lastly, I, I just want to bring it back to the book, A Woman Makes a Plan, and ask you, when it comes to the adventure of your life and of your journey with everything that's happened, looking back, is there, is there a moment that you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and you're like, wow, this happened? Not only for the magazines, but is there a moment or a story that you could share with us that inspired you to keep going? Because I think especially during a time like this, maybe people are getting laid off, they're losing their jobs, and they, they, may, they, they feel like things are you know, uncertain. So when you were dealt with times of uncertainty, how did you respond to that? You have to go on a budget. I mean, I did my own manicures, pedicures, I colored my own hair, cut it, I cut my children's hair. I always said, thank goodness my sons couldn't see the back of their head because <laughs> I wasn't good at it. You, you don't have to go to movies. You don't have to go out for dinner. Well, now you can't anyway. Yeah. You don't have to worry about luxuries. You can eat on a budget. And I've, I've often talked about bean stew. And of course, I talk about eating, eating well in my book. And uh, you really need to um, come, uh, you know, don't worry about any luxuries. You have to make do with what you have because we're going through a hard time now. I love and, that. Uh, and if you do that, then you have less fear. Love that. Yeah. So last but not least, May, I want to say we've spoken about your book, A Woman Makes a Plan, throughout this entire interview. And I want to ask you, where is the best place for people to not only buy the book, but to follow your journey to stay tuned with everything you have going on? Well, maymusk.com, that's where you can order the book. And that will take you to all the different stores that have online stores. Of course, all the stores are closed now. They can go online. And then there's also May Musk is Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram and stay tuned if I go into others. Other <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And everyone listening, make sure you go check out a woman makes a plan by May Musk. And that being said, May, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for inviting me.